You're ready, Craig and Lynn. We'll 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 get okay. ready. Okay. Terrific. Thanks. Thank you so much, Lisa. And welcome everyone to our noontime Zoom event. We're talking today about learning how to run your business on Google and the cloud with Craig Grant. My name is Pam Croak, and I'm the CEO of the Bucks County Association of Realtors. Uh, I'm here today because the leadership team and the staff at BCAR have spent the past year doing everything in our power to help our members maintain their professional edge during the pandemic. These have been crazy times. I don't need to tell you that, but uh, we, we've been working hard the past year and we're all virtual. You know, the BCAR office is virtual and uh, our education committee determined that uh, they wanted to have uh, education presented to our members uh, virtually. So to that end, uh, we created this noontime Zoom series. Today's topic is so very timely. Uh, I want to thank the Education Committee of the Bucks County Association of Realtors. I also want to thank the PAR Education Foundation because their support of this series is, is allowing us to do more than we typically would be able to do. So thanks to the PAR Education Foundation. I'm going to ask you right now um, to, a couple of housekeeping items. Number one, uh, please mute your microphone if you haven't already done so. And I, I know that many of you are on video, which is great. It makes it easier for our speaker, I think, to see some faces in front of, of him. Uh, you can put your questions into the chat feature. If you, if you hover down at the bottom of your Zoom screen, there's a chat function. You can put your, your questions in there. Craig's gonna be monitoring that. He's gonna answer those as they appear. Uh, there's also gonna be a Q&A period at the end of the program. And we do stick to 60 minutes. So, uh, you know, we will have time at the end for some Q&A. So, uh, you know, rest assured that we'll take care of that then. Uh, right now, what we'd like to do is launch a polling question. We are trying to gather information from our members about their comfort level with uh, resuming some form of live events. So uh, if you would, wouldn't mind launching that poll, Lisa, awesome, thank you. You could take a moment to just answer our poll. And Siobhan, will you let me know when we're... Yep, I'm just going to say we're about done. I'm going to end it. Okay. Okay, great. Thank you very much, everyone. Uh, right now, uh, without further ado, I'm going to turn my microphone over to the uh, Bucks County Association of Realtors President-elect Lynn Scherer. Lynn will be president of the association next year. She's on the leadership team this year. And I thank her for taking time today to, to do this for us. So without further ado, thanks, Lynn. Thanks, Pam. Yep, my name is Lynn Scherer, obviously. And I have the great pleasure of introducing our speaker today. So. He is quite the speaker, evidently. So with over 150 speaking engagements around the world each year, including sessions for NAR, several state conventions, and other key industry events, Craig Grant is considered one of the most sought after technology, marketing, and cybersecurity speakers around. As his motto says, motto says, advanced real estate technology and marketing instructed at a pre-K level. So he's right where we are. Craig <laughs> is able to take extremely complicated topics and present them in a way that the average non-technical person not only understands, but is able to apply and improve their business. So we're looking forward to that and bringing it down to where we can understand it. In addition to being the CEO of the Real Estate Technology Institute and the REIT.US, the real estate industry's home and online technology education, Craig Grant is an avid sports fan, music lover, 
and he can be found watching or participating in events and concerts with his friends. So without further ado, Craig, you have the microphone. All righty, sounds good. All right, so first of all, afternoon everyone and welcome to today's session. Uh, as they mentioned, my name is Craig Grant. I'm your geek tour guide for the hour, trying to teach you as much as I can about Google in the cloud. Uh, let me quickly, as I do this, switch over to our screen share so you guys can see the slides. Um, so I'm sure you don't wanna just look at me, you'd rather see the information. So as I mentioned, I do speak a lot in the industry and my whole deal is I try to make as technology as easy as possible to understand. Uh, and the reason is I know that most of you probably the average realtor I know is not techie or geek. So I try not to use any geeky words. Um, I'm also about as freestyle as they come. And I'm about to sneak this into the chat right now. Um, one thing that I do to try to help my students as much as possible, other than not using the geeky words and taking questions, is I do share my entire slide decks with my students. So I just put a link in the chat room and instructions how to do it. If you go to that link, um, reta.us slash CG event, you'll see it's a very basic, just sign in form, your name and email address is all you have to put in. And then it sends you to the next page where you can click and download any of my classes, not just this one. And if you download this class, what you'll see is it's way more than I'm covering in this hour. This class is actually built out for between four to six hours. Um, so we're gonna give you kind of the microwave version of what you would download uh, because we're gonna pack this into an hour, but we're gonna really teach you all about what the cloud is and how to really do it the right way. And by the way, most people I know that are not techies are very confused by the cloud. They're confused by what it is, how it works. My favorite question is always, where is it? Um, and they really think that the cloud is somewhat of a newer invention. But the real truth is the cloud has been around for years and every single person in this room has been already utilized in the cloud for years, uh, but they didn't used to call it the cloud. The cloud is like a marketing buzzword that companies now use to, sell, to promote their products and services that sound like they're a tech company. We're a cloud-based company. But I guarantee you, every person in this room has been doing cloud since the day you logged on to the internet. Because all the cloud really is, okay, is and you do on a computer device, which could be your phone, that is utilizing the internet connection instead of your device is the cloud. So instead of you installing software, it's an internet, either a website or an app that's connected to the internet. That's all the cloud really is. So let's go back 15 years ago. And let's say you want to use Microsoft Office. The only way to use Office, you had to go to a store, you had to buy a whole disk set of disks and install those disks into one computer. And then to use Office, you had to be on that same computer every single time. You couldn't hop onto someone else's computer. You had to be on your computer to access those programs in your files, right? Well, now let's say you want to use Office. Now you use Office in the cloud, it's called Office 365, which means you can do it on every device, not just one. So all the cloud really means is instead of installing software, we're using internet connected tool instead, a website or an app, that's all it really means. And once you do your work in that program, it saves your work to that company's server through the internet connection as well. So if I'm using Office in the cloud, it would save my work to Microsoft server through the internet. That's all it really means, guys, is internet connection and nothing else. It's not more complicated than that. But if we can get you to get rid of your installed software and instead switch over to cloud-based solutions instead, now you work anytime, anywhere on any connected device. And what I mean by that is, let's say you don't have your laptop with you. Well, you could do everything you want on your phone because phones are mini computers now. Let's say you don't have your phone with you, like that would ever happen, right? You never leave home without your phone. But if you did, you could jump on someone else's device, log into your cloud account and not miss a beat. It'd be just like you're on your home computer. So all it really means again is internet connected, which means any device you kind of log on to is like being on your main computer. Of course, anything that works in the cloud works online with the internet connection, but any good cloud-based tools like the ones I'm gonna show you also work offline as well. And what that means is, let's say you're in a vacated property doing an open house all day. You're not gonna be out of work that entire day twiddling your thumbs. You can do every bit of work you wanted to do without the internet connection. And later when you connect to the internet, it'll just upload whatever work you did during that downtime. So good cloud-based tools work without the internet connection as well, which is key. You don't want to be out of work when there's not internet, okay? And then anything you do in the cloud, of course, could be done privately just for yourself, okay? But one of the best, most powerful parts about the cloud is the ability to share and collaborate with other people. And by the way, every person in this group, I guarantee you, has already done this without realizing it. 
the way you guys are doing now your contracts and your forms, and then your clients are digitally signing those contracts remotely is a perfect example of collaborating in the cloud. They're doing it remotely and you're sharing it with them, right? But I'm gonna give you other examples where you could literally create the document from scratch with them, not just have them sign. You could share calendars and events and all of the things you could do collaborating in the cloud. And that really takes your customer service and your business to the next level when you're collaborating with other people. And then compared to the old days, it is so much more cost effective to start and run a business because of the cloud. Because again, let's go back 15 years ago. And I wanted to buy that whole disk set of Microsoft Office. Well, it was probably around $800 to buy that whole disk set, a lot of money, right? And let's say I just bought that in 2007. Two or three years later, when they came out with Office 2010, I had to pay another $300 to upgrade to the next version. So in the old days, you were spending a lot of money to purchase software and upgrade it on a continuous basis. They just kept you in that cycle of spending a lot of money. Well, the entire software industry has now converted to what's called software as service or SAS. And what SAS basically means is we're no longer purchasing software at all. We're renting and leasing it. So for example, again, go back to Microsoft Office. You now pay $5 a month to use it on multiple devices, not $800 to buy it and $300 to upgrade it. And there is no more such thing as upgrading software because if a software vendor wants to make a little update, they can do it anytime they want. They don't have to wait every few years to put out a new version. So it's so much more cost effective to start and run your business because of this. You just pay small monthly amounts and you can use an amazing tool, okay? And for any of you guys that are a little bit low tech, okay, and are a little bit nervous about using cloud-based tools, the truth is they're way easier to use than software. And because the reason for this is, as I just mentioned a moment ago, they can update cloud-based software anytime they want. It's just a website and they can push an update out any morning they want. So they don't have to wait months and months if people are complaining about something not working really well, they can make an improvement anytime they want to make it easier to use. So cloud-based software is actually much easier to use than old school software was. And for any of you guys in this group that are either company owners or team leaders, it's also way easier to train and deploy to multiple people. And what I mean by that is I can tell you as a tech trainer, I used to flat out hate in the old days training software. I dreaded training software because let's say I was trying to train this whole group on Microsoft Excel. And now let's just say Dawn has Excel 2007, Linda has 2010, Michael has 2013, Janet has 2015, and I'm teaching with the most current version up on the screen. And the entire time I'm teaching, the entire room is whining the whole time saying, well, my screen doesn't look like your screen. I don't have that menu and that button. Mine looks totally different than yours. That's because it was software with versions. So now if I train the whole group on one software, we all have the exact same screens at all times. It's much easier to learn. It's much easier to train and deploy as well if you're worried about multiple people. So everything about the cloud has improved business completely. And one of the biggest advantages of the cloud you don't really get to realize until you get rid of any of your installed software is everything in the cloud is syncing at all times. And I'm not worried about how many devices you own, how many offices you work out of, or what device you did a project on. If you work on a project on your computer and it's using a cloud software, it would be the exact same thing when you lock, check it out on your phone or when you check it out from one of your other office's devices. So everything in the cloud syncs across devices, which makes it so much easier for you because we all now live in a multi-device world. We really do. Okay, We don't have one. We have multiple devices now. So that is a huge, huge factor. But I'm sure all of you guys have one gigantic fear. Is the cloud really that safe to use? Well, you're gonna tell me to put my whole business, my livelihood out on the internet. Well, what if it gets hacked? Well, here's the truth. And when she went through my bio, when Len read, went through my bio, she talked about one of my major topics is cybersecurity. And you guys may not know this, but I am the author of CRS's cybersecurity course. I just had to rewrite ePro day two because it was wrong, all about cybersecurity. Cybersecurity is one of my major topics I speak about. Uh, and one of the things that I tell people all the time is, and this is the reality, as a hacker, your devices you guys use every day, your phones, your tablets, and your computers are so easy to hack compared to a good cloud-based company. Devices are easy, really, really easy to hack. So the key to the cloud is really, it is safe as long as you pay attention to the vendors you choose to use in the cloud. Because if you pick a vendor with poor security, you're already behind the eight ball and you could be in trouble. But if you could pick a vendor with top-notch security, you should be in good shape. Once you make sure you pick a good vendor, and trust me, I'm gonna teach you 
about some of the biggest names in the cloud you might already be using have poor security. But let's say you go with one of the vendors I give you that has excellent security, then you just gotta make sure you use it in a safe way. And the reason I say that is you are still the weakness of the cloud. And what I mean by that is if you go with a vendor with great security, make, but then you make the password to that account, password one, two, three, it does matter what vendor you chose because your passwords are weak. Or you like to use public Wi-Fi without something called a VPN, which I'll give you, okay? You're a sitting duck to a hacker if you get on public Wi-Fi without a VPN. If you don't understand how to just make yourself more secure, then the cloud might not be the best thing to you to do. But I will solve your security issues and give you better antivirus protection, give you better password tools, stuff like that. And that way you won't be the weakness. And then it really goes back to the first bullet. Are you picking the best vendors, ones that have good security? If you do that, then yes, the cloud is safe to use. Does that make sense? All right, good. All right, so let's start off with file storage because that is the way other than your contracts, I'm sure just about everybody in this class is using the cloud so far. And if you're doing file storage, you're probably using one of the big six companies, either Dropbox, Google Drive, Box, SugarSync, iCloud, or OneDrive. And of these six, there is one I would highly kind of warn you about when it comes to security. And I guarantee you, as soon as I click to the next slide, there's going to be a couple palm faces. People going, oh, man, because that's the one I'm using because they're one of the most popular ones. But the one I'm gonna warn you about is Dropbox, okay? It is a well-known fact that Dropbox has very poor security. They've been hacked multiple times. When I say the word they there, I'm not talking about people's accounts. I'm talking the corporation of Dropbox has been breached several times. And this has actually been in more than one publication from NAR. I'm sure Pennsylvania Realtors might've mentioned at one point where they advise you be careful of using Dropbox in the real estate world because they do not have business level encryption. Okay, if all you want is better security than Dropbox, but the same functionality of files and folders that you can share and stuff like that, but better security, you can look into either Box or SugarSync. But my big piece of advice is, and I don't want to kind of make you feel wasting your time if you just took that note, but I always say I wouldn't waste my time with any of these three on this slide. Because when you go with these three, you're really just getting one functionality, file storage. But if you go with one of the big three tech companies, either Google, Microsoft, or Apple, you get way, way more than just file storage. If I go with one of the big three, I can build my whole business in the cloud around one system. I'm gonna get Office in the cloud and communication tools in the cloud and a lot more than just file storage. So go with one of the big three. And let me quickly address each of the three, okay? Of the three, there's only one that I give people warnings about, which is iCloud, which is Apple, okay? And the reason I give people warnings about Apple is first of all, even though Apple is so well known for their security and their privacy, Apple has had a couple security breaches over the last couple of years. So even though their reputation is amazing good security, they're not as good as everyone thinks. But even if you can get past that, okay, the biggest issue I have with Apple is everything Apple builds is intended just to work on Apple devices, not just iCloud, but iWork, their office suite, iMessages, their phone and messaging tools, everything Apple builds is meant to just work on Apple devices. So if you're buying just for yourself and every device you own is an Apple device, then iCloud is a possible good solution for you. But if you have one device in your mix that's not an Apple device, an Android phone, a Windows computer or a tablet or whatever, then it will not work with all these Apple tools. And now you're having to figure out how do I make this one tool work with all the others? And if any of you guys are either company owners or team leaders, you're know, trying to decide which one to use as a company, I don't even know how a company consider iCloud because if one agent in your company doesn't use Apple tools, they're out of the mix of the company, okay? So that is the big issue with Apple is it's really meant just to work on Apple devices and that can create serious issues, okay? With Microsoft, Microsoft doesn't have any of those issues. Everything Microsoft does works on all devices. Microsoft has excellent security and they do have really good tools where you could run your whole business, okay? But not to see the title of classes about Google, okay? But I'm about to show you what I like to call my 11 reasons why Google's your best solution. Because to me, Google gives you way, way more for way, way less with top-notch security. And that is a key, okay? So we're gonna go through my 11 reasons, again, why Google's the best one for you. So the first one is the fact that Google, their entire system, is what's called open source or open API, which to a non-geek doesn't mean anything to you. But what it really means is, and this is huge in the technology world, 
is everything Google builds that allow other companies to use their tools to build even cooler tools. So people ask me all the time, which one's better, Gmail versus Outlook? To me, they're even until you throw in what are called add-ons and then Gmail blows away Outlook. Which one's better, Microsoft Office versus Google Docs? They're about even until you throw in the add-ons and then Google blows away Microsoft Office. So the fact that Google allows third-party companies to build tools inside to make them even better is a huge advantage Google has. And I'm gonna give you some examples of some awesome add-ons you can throw in, okay? And this is just kind of giving an example. Like right now we're in Google Docs, the Office Suite, and there's actually a menu item in every Office program called add-ons. If you click on that, it drops down a menu and you can say, I wanna go get add-ons. And it's just like shopping for an app. You go out to what's called the marketplace and now you can kind of find an add-on that does just about anything to improve that Office program, to improve your calendars, to include your Gmail, whatever you're doing, okay? And it's no different than going to an app store you click into any of these market in any of these tools, you can read about it and learn about it, read customer reviews before you decide to install it. And if you want to install it, it's a one click free install. Now, just to kind of give you an idea. I've never paid for an add on. There's been a few I've decided to upgrade to go to their pro versions because I'm like, this is a great tool. I want the even better version of it. But add ons are always free. It's just do you want to upgrade them? OK, and again, some of these are pretty awesome. All right, the second reason why Google is great is Google is 100% cloud-based. Everything they build is a cloud tool. Google does not believe in installing software at all. So you never have to worry about any syncing when it comes to Google because everything they do is cloud-based. That's key, okay? Three, and this may or may not be a big deal to you, but for someone like me, I love the fact that Google has invested a ton of time integrating tools with other tools. Because uh, to me, integration is how you get more done. And what I mean by that is, first of all, if you're in a Google account, you have that little nine dot menu, it's called your checkerboard, the top of your account. If you click on that, it allows you to hop from one Google program to another. So if you're in the middle of checking your email, you can jump over and say, I wanna go do a spreadsheet in Google Sheets, or I wanna go to my calendars or anything like that from your email account. So it makes it very easy to go from one program to another. But it's not just that menu, Google literally integrates a lot of tools inside of their programs so you could do multiple things. For example, if you look over on the right side where I boxed in that whole little contact list, that's actually Google Hangouts and Google Meet integration. So I can, like, let's say Yoshina is in my list, I could say, hey, she, she's online, let's have a quick little conversation or a video call. Like It's almost like it's built right in where I can communicate. Over on the right side, I have this little bar where I can go to all my little shortcuts of my favorite tools I use all the time. Some are Google, some are not, okay? And they just integrate all throughout their different programs, okay? If you go create an email, you have integrations with Google Drive for your attachments and Google Payments to pay for things and stuff like that. So all these little integrations really help you get more done, not having to go to another program. If you're in your office suite, same deal, okay? And by the way, a common question I always get with the Office Suite is you can also save all these documents back to Microsoft Office Documents. So if you're working with a client, you can say I'm sending it right back to you as a Word doc, Google document. Uh, but again, integrations inside of here all over the place to make it easy to do things. The fourth reason why Google is great is they have a way better option than Gmail. You just might not know about it. Uh, and usually if we're in a classroom, I'd say, how many of you guys have a Gmail account? And like almost every hand goes up because most of the world has one at this point. Well, if you have a Gmail account, I'm sure you know it's free. You don't pay for Gmail. But because it's free, there's a lot of trade-offs with Gmail. The first one is there is no support whatsoever for Gmail accounts. So if anything ever goes wrong with your email, your contacts, calendars, or anything, you're completely on your own. The most you can do is submit a question to the forums, and then you're hoping a nice Samaritan comes along and answers your question. Google does not monitor their forums at all, okay? There's also advertising in a free Gmail account. In fact, it's contextually related advertising. And what that means is, yes, Google is reading your emails. They are reading your documents and everything in your Gmail account to make sure there's a related ad kind of showing up alongside your emails and your events. Now, is it a human being? No, it's a software, but they are reading a Gmail account content. And of course, your email address ends in gmail.com, and all you get for free is 15 gigs of storage space, which is not much. You'll outgrow that very quickly. Yes, you could buy more space, but this is what you get with a free Gmail account. 
Well, Google has a whole other kind of account called Google Workspace. And by the way, it used to be called Google uh, G Suite. They just recently changed to Google Workspace. Just be aware of that, okay? And Workspace, there's an account that's six a month, but I always say don't waste your time with the six, do the 12, okay? But as long as you become a paid customer of Google, you get so many advantages over Gmail. The first thing is now you have 24 seven support directly with Google for any Google related problem, not just with your email account and your calendars, you can call up and say, hey, my Android phone is acting weird. We will transfer the Android support department. My Chrome browser is doing something weird. We will transfer the, uh, to the Chrome department. As long as you're a paid customer, 24 seven support for any Google related issue. There's also what's called free onboarding, uh, which basically I'm sure if any of you guys were going to create this account, you'd be a little bit nervous. You'd screw something up and wouldn't pull in your contacts properly. You screw up your calendars or whatever it is. Well, that's called onboarding. So you can literally get on the phone with a Google employee, like a support person, explain to them your current setup and how you want to be set up on your new account. And they'll do it all for you. That way, you know, it's done right at the beginning. That right there is very valuable having a geek do all your work for you to set it up. Uh, by the way, Stacy just asked, do you have to change your Gmail address to this? No, you can still have a free Gmail account and also have a, G, have a workspace account as well, okay? Next thing, there is zero advertising in a G Suite account. In fact, it's in your terms of service. They will never read anything in G Suite uh, Google Workspace account because it's a business account. It's all private, okay? Your email address, this is a biggie, ends in your own website address. So instead of you having a gmail.com, if you have, let's say, buckscountyrealestateagent.com, you could have mike at buckscountyrealestateagent.com uh, as your email address and run it through fully through Google. Now, that doesn't mean you have to change anything about your website. Your website still stays active. Trying to unmute. Are we good, Lisa? Okay. You muted me for some reason. Yeah, right. I'm sorry. I apologize. <laughs> okay. All right. So again, you're able to use your own website address as your email address and keep running your website the same way you're already doing it. So Google takes over running your email, which is huge. Okay. Uh, and you get all the tools you need to run your business from Google, your office suite, your communication tools, all your storage tools, there's so many tools you get in a Google Workspace account that are included in here, okay? And then you're gonna get two terabytes of storage space, which I've yet to find a realtor who can eat up two terabytes. That's a ton of documents you're putting out there for the 12 bucks a month. They do have what's called a Business Plus account, which is 18 a month instead of 12, and then it goes up to five terabytes, okay? So you're talking about a ton of information you're able to store out there and there's gonna be one item in here that I'm gonna show you. You're gonna be like, wow, I need to have this much storage because it's gonna throw in something else. All right, Stacy asked, does it take much time or effort to set this up? Not if you take advantage of the free onboarding. Again, you get on the phone with one of their support people and they do it all for you in a few minutes. All right, the fifth reason why Google's a great solution is the fact that they include all those add-ons I talked about earlier. Earlier, we just said they have the ability to create add-ons. Now I'm gonna show you some examples of great add-ons. So starting in the Gmail, the email part of your account. So there's a couple of great add-ons like Ystamp. And by the way, I'm gonna copy and paste all these add-ons into the chat room for you so you have the full list, okay? Uh, but Ystamp is easy to use and what it does, it allows you to create a very nice looking signature. Like see how my picture is in a little circle, all my social media icons are below it, all my contact infos to the right of it, really nice and uh, kind of stylized. There is no way to create a signature as clean as this without a tool like Ystamp. So you pick the layout you like and Ystamp creates a very nice looking signature for you. All right, the next one is that little pink circle in the corner with the letter M. Let me just grab this entire list for you guys so I can copy and paste it in. All right, there we go. All right, so the next one is that little icon for the letter M and it's called Mailvelope. And what Mailvelope allows you to do is anytime you click on that little pink icon, it opens up a different window to create your email. And now you're creating a totally password protected encrypted email. So let's just say a lender wants you to send over some financial information or information about your kids or whatever it is. Now you could send back a password protected encrypted email 
and that Linda would have to have a password to read your email. Okay, so it's security built in with Mailvelope. Another great one is called Boomerang. Okay, and again, I just put this whole list into the chat room for you guys. Boomerang is that entire bottom row of the compose message screen. So first of all, there's the send later option. So let's say you're up late at night responding to emails for clients. You don't want your clients to know you're working late at night. You can say send it out tomorrow at 9.30 a.m. or whatever time you want. But where Boomerang gets really cool is that little checkbox right next to it. So if I check that box, let's say I'm trying to send an email to Eileen. And Eileen's kind of been blowing me off lately. She's not responding to my messages. Well, if I check that box, I can say, if Eileen does not read my email within three days, notify me that she's not reading my emails. It'll send me an email back saying she's never read your email or even opened it. And now maybe either I send her a, a different email with a better subject line, or maybe I try a different route. Maybe I try calling or texting her if she's blowing off my emails, okay? So it allows you to know if somebody's interacting with your emails, that little checkbox. And then the third thing that Boomerang does is this little button over here in the right corner called Respondable. If I click on that button, a little panel shows up on the right side. And now what it's gonna do is it uses artificial intelligence to analyze the content of my email on the fly for the likelihood somebody will respond to it. So I have a weak subject line, only a three out of a 10 for my subject line. My body content's not that great. Now I'm getting, oh, I improved a little bit. Now I moved up to likely that somebody's gonna respond to it. So the more you create a better email, it now up to very likely based on a better email. So it's helping me write better emails on the fly by saying your subject line's not that great, your content's a little bit weak or not or too passive. So it really helps you create better emails as you're typing them. Especially right now, if you're kind of on your own with pandemic, it's like having someone there helping you write emails. All right, next one is Grammarly. And Grammarly is awesome. And Grammarly isn't just for Gmail. You put this into the full web browser and anywhere you are on the internet, if you're typing, it kicks in. It's like spell check and grammar check on steroids. So you can be typing up a description of a property in your MLS and Grammarly will kick in and help you write a better property description. If you're typing up a contact form on a website, it'll kick in. And of course it would tie into your emails if you're using a tool like Gmail. So it literally is like a way better spell check and grammar check than you have in Office. It's called Grammarly. And I didn't pull separate screenshots of these, but just to show you, like you can also get um, add-ons for DocuSign, AuthentiSign, eSign, like any of the major signing tools used in this business have add-ons as well. So if you wanna make it where as soon as you get an email with an attachment, you can immediately pull it into DocuSign to sign it, there you go. Just makes it much easier to get things done. All right, there's also a whole contact database side of your account, but we're gonna come back to that in a minute with the CRMs, okay? Of course, there's Google calendars, which are the most popular calendaring tool now. Very easy to use, you can create multiple calendars. Uh, and if you're not aware of this, Google made a full integration with Google Meet into their calendar. So anytime you create a calendar event, you could say, let's do a video conference call meeting as you're creating a calendar event. And about a month ago, they also allowed Zoom integration as well. So if you're using Zoom to do video calls on the fly, you can create meetings out of those as well. Uh, and if any of you guys are company owners or team leaders, the most recent updates to Google calendars were all about teams and companies. Uh, and this is something for the association as well you guys might want to look into, is now you have the ability to do room scheduling, where you can set up a room like your conference room and allow everyone in the company to schedule time in that room. And they also added the ability to do side-by-side -side scheduling. So let's just say I'm your team leader. I'm trying to figure out when's the best time I can pull all of us together for a meeting. Well, I can click on all of our names and put our calendars side by side and see when we're all available. So really good improvements to calendars for teams and companies. And then there are some great third party add-ons for calendars like Calendly. I love Calendly, I use it every day, okay? One of the biggest pains in the butt in business is setting up a meeting time or an appointment with somebody. A lot of times you're going back and forth with emails and texts, you still haven't figured out a time that works for the both of you. When people schedule appointments with me, there's no going back and forth. I just sell them my Calendly link. And then they click on that link. It shows them here's the next several days on the calendar. They can then click on any day on the calendar they want and see what are the available times on that day. They have no idea what else I'm doing that day just so they could choose the 3.30 time slot and send us both the calendar invite to accept. Okay, so it makes it very easy to schedule appointments. You just give someone a link and they pick their favorite time. 
And then there's another tool that I use um, that's similar, but a little bit different called assistant.to. So with assistant.to, it works in the opposite direction. You go into your own calendar and pick a few times that the person can pick from. So I use them both because sometimes it makes more sense to let the customer pick. And let's say during convention season, I use assistant.to the entire time during conventions because I'm running around with my head chopped off, running from one end of a convention hall to another, doing presentations or meetings. And I'll tell people, hey, just use my assistant to pick the three times I have, I have left today. That's it. That's all I have is these three times. Okay. So sometimes I let the customer pick. Sometimes I give them here are the time slots to choose from. And these two tools allow you to do that. All right, Pete put in the chat, Craig, in order to access the corporate assets, I have to log into foxroach.com. However, when I right click the phone number in a CRM, I made the call because Chrome. All right, so he's asking, based, Peter, like the question you're asking is kind of because your company is the one providing your account and they've set up their own rules. So you'd have to speak to your IT person at your company to see if they can make an exception for what you're wanting to do. So that's a company provided account. So you got to go through your IT administrator. All right, there's even entire third-party CRMs that completely are built into Gmail accounts. And if you're wondering, why would I want a CRM in a Gmail account? Well, I'm sure if any of you guys have a CRM, you can probably agree to the fact that the biggest problem or pain with a CRM is the amount of time you have to put into it to enter in information. And a lot of times, dual enter information. You're entering in it once into your company system, then into yours, then onto your calendar. And there's a lot of time with inputting information. Well, if it's integrated inside your Gmail account, you wouldn't have to do any of that extra work because it already knows all your emails and all your communications and your calendars and everything else. So these are four different companies that have built out full-blown Gmail CRMs, either Yesware, Streak, Inside or Zoho. And if any of you guys are interested in, in looking into this route, I would recommend looking at the Streak over the other three. Because Streak is the only one that I've seen so far that has built out an entire real estate CRM inside of Gmail. So they already understand the business. There's already real estate content in your drip email campaigns. And they understand the whole follow-up process that happens with a lead and a lifelong customer and everything else. So Streak has built out a full-blown real estate CRM baked right inside of a Gmail account, in your calendars, your contacts, and everything else. And it just integrates all those communications to make it easier for you. So again, you could look into that. Now, if you end up going with Streak, you would not need to look into Folio because Streak includes what's called a task or transaction manager. Uh, but if you don't go with Streak, Folio has become very popular in industry. And if you don't know what a transaction manager is, it's almost like your own personal task or to-do list each day. You wake up each morning, it tells you here are the nine activities you have to do each day so you don't forget any of them. You wake up the next day, here are your 11 activities for today. So it's like your own scheduler and to-do list. And again, Streak already, it does include this, but Fully has become very popular because it, again, it integrates right inside a Gmail account and it'll start creating customer profiles for you. Uh, and then it will create creating schedules, everything you have to do for all your clients so you don't forget anything. So as I mentioned, Streak includes this, Fully is a standalone program, but these tools just make your life easier. All right, the sixth reason why Google is great uh, to run your business on is the fact it includes the entire Google Docs suite, which as I mentioned, is a totally free replacement for Microsoft Office. And if you're not familiar with it, Google has an equivalent of every Office program. Docs is just like Word, Slides is just like PowerPoint, Sheets is just like Excel, Drawing is just like Publisher, and Forms is way better, but it's similar to Access, okay? And the best part about these is, first of all, it ties directly into Google Drive. So let's just say you've been using Office for years and you've got hundreds of Word documents and Excel spreadsheets and all the Word, uh, all the Microsoft files. You could just dra drag and drop them into Google Drive. And then anytime you click on any of those files, it'll ask you, do you want to convert this into a Google file as well? And if you do, bam, it's converted. You don't have to do anything geeky or special to work on your Office documents in Google Docs. And then the next best part about it is, all these programs look exactly like Microsoft Office. Exactly. Does not look exactly like Word. The menu items at the top, the file, edit, view, are the exact same menu items that Microsoft uses. All the little icons, the editing toolbar, are the exact same icons Microsoft uses. So there's not a big learning curve of switching from Microsoft to Google because it looks exactly the same on purpose. There's only two differences between Google and Microsoft. But in my opinion, they're both advantages for Google. 
The first one is the ability to share. Now, yes, Microsoft allows you to share a document and there's two ways to do it in Microsoft. You can either share a document and track changes, like you come back with all the cross outs and everything, which is a messy process to keep up with, or Microsoft now has a separate program, Microsoft Teams. You can up up a Word document in Teams and then share it and work on it with somebody in Teams. But now you're using two different programs. Google, every one of these programs has a share button built in and only is it built in, let's just say I share this document with Elaine and I see she's logged in, I see her little icon at the top. I know she's working on the document the same time as me. We can make changes in real time even though we're in other parts of the world. I, we can have chat conversations about it. We can even have a video call discussing this document whatever leaving the document. Okay, so it's much better for collaboration because it's all built in. And then the other big difference between Microsoft and Google are the add-ons. The fact that you can throw in third-party tools to make these programs even better. And I'm going to give you a few examples of these now. All right, so starting with the Word program, okay, which again is just called Docs. It's just like Microsoft Word. And if you don't know this, there's also little template libraries in all these programs, like pre-done uh, documents that are nice looking and easy to use, including, and most people don't even know about this, there's an entire legal template library. So if you ever need to create a legal document, you don't have to hire a lawyer. You can just work off one of the templates in here. Of course, it always helps to have a lawyer, but that is available, okay? Uh, and then when you go into the docs program, there's a lot of great uh, add-ons you can throw in, like mail merch for Google Sheets. The way this works is you just create a Word document here in Google Docs, you have a spreadsheet over in Google Sheets, and then one click can merge them together. So if you want to create personalized letters and envelopes and things like that, this is an easy way to do that. Okay. There's another one, I'm sure you know the name Avery Labels are the biggest labeling company on earth. So they have a plugin so that way you can easily create labels if you need to. Uh, if you move into the PowerPoint program called Google Slides, again, it looks just like it. And to me, Slides blows away PowerPoint because it makes it so easy to use Okay, with these add-ons. First of all, it has built in all these tools have Google search engine and Google videos, YouTube integration. So if I want to go search for a copyright safe picture to put on a slide or a video to put in here, it's very easy to do so because it integrates with, the, with Google search engine and YouTube. And then you can also get other add-ons uh, such as Haiku Deck, which allows me to visually search for all copyright safe pictures of any topic, okay? Or insert icons, I can insert any icon I want into any slide in any color very easily. Uh, or Pear Deck, now this one might not come in contact, uh, come and play for you, but if any of you guys do any kind of training, Pear Deck allows me to build very cool games, quizzes, stuff like that in the middle of my presentations very, very easily. So stuff like this really doesn't exist in the Microsoft world, very easy to use in Google. Sheets is just like Excel for creating spreadsheets and calendars and all those kinds of things. Uh, and some great add-ons you can put in here like Power Tools. Power Tools, if you are a real Excel geek, you might wanna get Power Tools. It allows you to do crazy pivot tables and formulas just like a, like a really powerful person would do in Excel. Um, split names I use all the time to clean up spreadsheets, stuff like that. And one that I give out all the time that a lot of people love is yet another mail merge. Very similar to the mail merge we did in the Word program. With this one, you just have a spreadsheet here in Google Sheets. You will create an email over in Gmail, but you don't send it. You just save it as a draft. And then one click merge them together. And only would it send out personalized emails to every person in your list. You even keep track of every single person. Did they open it? Did they click on it? Any email addresses were bad and bounced? Stuff like that. Now, this is one of the rare ones where I said, this is awesome. I want the paid version. You might not need it. The free version allows you to do up to 150 people a day. The paid version is only $20 a year for 1500 a day. So I had no problems paying 20 bucks and now it allows me to do all my follow-up for all my classes. Drawing is just like publisher, okay, for design. But if you're really looking for something better for graphic design, I'm a huge fan of Canva, okay? If you're not familiar with Canva, it's way better for designing marketing materials or you have Pixar for doing original graphic design. There's a lot of free tools for doing design that are better than drawing, okay? And then Google Forms, I mentioned it's kind of like uh, Access, but if any of you guys have ever tried to use Access, Access is a geeky program that requires you to know code. Forms requires zero code and you can create your own questionnaires, polls, surveys. In fact, Lisa sent me one a pre-question from one of you guys about the, before the class 
is there any way that you could like have someone fill out a survey or questions or anything like that? Google Forms is an easy, free way to do it. You create your own questionnaire and then somebody fills it out and it immediately creates a spreadsheet of every person's answer and stuff like that. It's a really easy to use free tool. All right, the seventh reason why Google is your best solution is one of their programs called Google Keep. Now, if you're not familiar with Google Keep, uh, it's not a very well-known tool of theirs, but most people are more familiar with a competitive program called Evernote. You might know that name better. Well, Google is very uh, kind of scared of Evernote. It's become extremely popular all over the world and they were getting concerned. People will stop using Google and start using Evernote instead. So they challenged their team to build something just like Evernote. It's called Google Keep. So if you're using Evernote, I'm not saying you have to jump ship, but why pay for Evernote when Google Keep is just part of your account, right? And you could do everything you do in Evernote from note taking, organizing ideas and projects, uh, recording meetings and notating them, getting them typed up, transcribed. Everything you do in Evernote, you can do in Google Keep. And again, it's just part of your account. And then your eighth reason why Google is your best solution is the fact that really all your communication tools are included. You can use Google Hangouts and Google Voice to doing phone calls and text messaging and uh, chatting and stuff like that. You can also use Google Meet, their new program for video conferencing. So the same way we're doing this class right now in Zoom, they could have done it in Google Meet if they wanted to. And if you have a free Gmail account, you can have up to 50 people at once for free uh, and you're limited to 40 minute times. Uh, if you have a workspace account, you can do up to 150 people at once. And if you have that business level one, the plus account, you can do up to 250 people at once. Okay. And by the way, one of the coolest things about Google Meet that I'm, I love is it also has full integration with Google Translate. So let's say you have an international client that speaks a different language than you. You guys can both go into Google Meet and translate in real time what the other person's saying. It's pretty awesome. And then reason number nine is all your backup and syncing solutions are included, not just Google Drive for your files and your folders. You've got Google Photos and YouTube for photo and video editing and storage. You've got Hangouts, Voice and Meet for all your communication and backup of those for compliance reasons. You have Google Keep and Gmail and Play for all your other things you have in your Google world. Really everything you're doing is being backed up and synced 24 hours a day, that's huge. And remember I said a little bit earlier, Google does not believe in installed software, right? I lied. They have one program that they that you can install. It's called Google Drive Sync. And what Google Drive Sync basically does, you install this into your computer and it backs up your entire computer into Google Drive 24 hours a day. So if any of you guys are backing up or paying for any backup solutions like Carbonite or Mosey or anything like that to back up your computers in the cloud, that's now included in Google Drive automatically. And then reason number 10 is what I like to say is really the rest of the ecosystem. If you spend a little bit of time and go through Google's entire offerings of all their programs or go out to that marketplace and start looking for those third party tools, I've yet to be challenged by a realtor of, do you know a, an add-on that can do this for me and not found a solution for it that wasn't either free or dirt cheap, okay? You could really, if you spend some time in that marketplace, you could find a solution for everything in your business. And by the way, these are a couple that most people don't know about with Google, like Jamboard, okay? Jamboard is a totally interactive whiteboard. So if you're doing any kind of like team meeting and planning or anything like that, Jamboard is an easy to use tool for that. I mean, there's so many tools in the Google world. You can build little free company websites for all your team members and everything to use for Google sites. I mean, really everything you can do. And if any of you guys are company owners or team leaders, You've got other solutions in there like currents, like how you can kind of monitor all your HR things in your company. I mean, there's so much stuff that Google provides to run a business these days. It really, really is. And all this is included, again, in that whole Google Workspace account. All right. That's kind of my, I try to pack as much in as I could into the hour of why Google is your best solution. But reason number 11, oh, before I get to reason 11, I forgot about one tool that I'm gonna highlight because I'm just kind of blasting through some of Google's tools, but this one shows you just how crazy Google is and how much they're willing to give away for free, okay? I don't know if anybody in this class has ever used what's called CAD software. That's C is in Charlie, A is in Apple, D is in David, okay? CAD software is typically used by architects, city planners and engineers. It's some of the most expensive and powerful software there is. I've never seen CAD software on the open market for less than $10,000. It can easily get up into the $50,000 range for the best stuff, okay? 
Well, Google has a free CAD software co called Google SketchUp. That just shows you how much they're willing to give away for free when you can't find it anywhere else for less than $10,000. Now, of course, there is a pro level of this you can upgrade to, but the fact they have a free CAD software is just mind blowing. It really, really is, okay? And then reason number 11 is kind of my summary of everything you get for that $12 a month, okay? So again, you have the ability to use your own domain in your email address and your own branding in the account, not the Gmail logo and the gmail.com address. You have two terabytes of storage across everything, which will definitely be enough for pretty much everyone in this class, okay? On Mac computer backup of your entire computers, 24 hours a day. All the tools you need to run your business from Google, 24 seven support directly with Google, plus top-notch security and the free onboarding. Oh, sorry, I went the wrong way there. Okay, and then you can also throw in the third-party add-ons and make your account even better, each part of your account better. And then the other side of this is, what other tools might you be able to eliminate from your current spending and your current budget by switching to this and spending the 12 bucks? For example, by using the whole Gmail suite, if you're paying for any kind of email hosting, any calendaring tools or basic CRMs, you can eliminate those costs, okay? By using Google Docs, you can stop paying for Microsoft Office, which is a monthly fee per device. By throwing in Google Keep, if you're paying for Evernote, stop paying for that. By throwing in Google Drive, Google Photos, and Google Drive Sync, you stop paying for anything like Dropbox or Carbonite if you're paying for those kinds of services. And by throwing in all the communication tools, you can even stop paying for your phones because you make phone calls and video calls out of them and receive them or any video conferencing solution like Zoom or GoToMeeting, okay? And that's just scratching the surface. Again, if you spend a little bit of time in that marketplace, you might be able to eliminate some other costs uh, that you're currently spending in your budget. I've been able to slash my cost like over 95% by switching to this the way I used to run my business by moving everything into Google in this whole Google world. So it is a, to me, again, the cheapest way to run a business with top-notch security and excellent support 24 hours a day. That's why I recommend Google. All right, any questions? Uh, all right, I see Janet asked in the chat, uh, can you back up more than one computer? Absolutely, you just gotta, you have to install it on each computer you wanna do, do, but you can back up more than one computer. All right, let me, I'm gonna put into the chat, oh, that was the add-ons I did. Let me get the other thing that I copy and pasted in which is how you can download the slides, okay? So I just put back into the slide deck, into the chat room, how you can download all these slides we just covered, okay? And let's open it up to any questions you guys might have. And if you'd rather ask them verbally, feel free and I can raise your hand and I can give you the ability to speak as well. Or if you wanna unmute yourself, you can do that as well. So any thoughts or questions? Um, Stacy has a question. Uh, mm -hmm. What is the name of the slide? presentation on your website. It, the this exact slide. name of this class, how to run your business on Google in the cloud. So when you go to that retail.us slash CG event, as I mentioned, it's just a basic sign in page, your name and email address. It then sends you to the page where you can download all the classes. So you're going to click on the student downloads tab on that page and you'll see a list of all my classes and look alphabetically for this one called run your business on Google in the cloud. All right, Judy just said, after I uh, did the login, it did not take me to the slides. It should have, but I'll give you the shortcut. I usually make you sign in, that way I can just get your name and email address, but not a big deal. So I'm gonna give you the direct link. All right, so there's the link if you don't wanna sign in on that page where you can go directly to the slides. Oh, I'm sorry, that's not the right link. I wasn't thinking, my bad. All right, that's the direct link. I kind of combined the two there in my head there for a second. So it's reti.us slash hire us slash Craig dash grant. And then you would still have to click on that student downloads tab to download the slides, but you wouldn't have to sign in. All right, any other thoughts, questions, anything guys? All right, um, Linda just asked, I have T-Mobile, does this replace my phone company slash service? No, you, you're not gonna be able to get rid of your cell phone with this, but you might be able to get rid of your office phone or your house phone. Like you, you, like you could make use Google Voice and all these tools to make phone calls from your cell phone, 
but you still need your cell phone service. All right, uh, Nadia just asked, can you connect these applications to Alexa? A lot of them. Um, yes, you can put like Google calendars on there and you can do uh, Google Keep to say, you know, create me a shopping list before I head to the store. There are a lot of these tools that will integrate with Alexa, but I can, not all of them, but you just have to look into that. Now with Google Home, a lot of these tools integrate with Google Home. All right, um, let me see if I missed any. Uh, Melvelope, Lisa saying she can't find Melvelope in the marketplace. Um, let me try to find you a link to it. I'm not sure. I know I use it all the time. All right, so there's the link for Melvelope in the chat. Let me see if I missed anything else. A couple of thank yous, which I totally appreciate, guys. All right. Uh, I hope I'm getting your name right. Is it Crayle? I oh, but I didn't hammer your name there. Uh, ask, what is the difference between G Suite and Google Workspace? So G Suite, they're phasing out, just so you know. You cannot sign up for a G Suite account anymore. Um, and the differences are a little bit, are kind of subtle. So the major things is the amount of storage space. Like for example, G Suite accounts for 12 bucks a month used to get unlimited space. Now it's the two terabytes. Uh, and the only other difference that I'm really aware of between G Suite and Google Workspace, and by the way, it's a free upgrade if you already have it, you just say one click, change my account, um, is in Google Meet, the video conferencing tool. In Google, uh, in uh, G Suite, the previous version, you cannot record videos like the way we're recording in this class. In Google Workspace, you can record. So those are the only two major differences that I'm aware of. Oh, and there's one other which is you don't have what's called Google Vault. Um, if you're an agent, you don't care about Google Vault. If you're a broker owner, you do. Because Google Vault allows you to do compliance reporting for your whole company across the entire account. So again, G Suite didn't include that. Google Workspace does. Okay, so that's really the only differences that I know is the amount of storage space you get, unlimited versus two terabytes, the ability to record your meetings, uh, and the Google Vault for compliance reporting. All right. All right, Drew asked how much Gmail space they give in $12 a month. Uh, it's two terabytes of information. And that's across everything. That's across your drive, your email, everything. That's a lot of space. All right, anything else, guys? Craig, there was one question about uh whether we, you can build multi websites under one account. So Google Sites, it allows you to for free to build internal websites. So in other words, if you want to build a website for your company or for your team, you can do as many of those as you want for free. Mm -hmm. If you want to build a public website, you know, that's going to go out on the internet to consumers, then that's a paid option. That's okay. Separate. Great. And a question from someone asking if they can have your email address. Sure. Yep. Awesome. Yep, I'm gonna, I'll put in the chat my okay. name, email address. And also if you guys really need help learning about this stuff, um, I do run a site called RETI, uh, which I'll put into the chat as well. It's reti.us. Every Wednesday at four o'clock, me and my team do free webinars every single Wednesday at four. Awesome. We do little Facebook workshops every Monday. And if you wanna become a member of the site, you get access to everything. We have tons of stuff helping you learn about tech and marketing. Wow. This has been terrific, Craig. I can't thank you enough for taking the time. And uh, again, I'm just reminding everyone that uh, we have recorded this and uh, Siobhan will put this up. You'll get an email with the recording information and you can uh, promote this among your colleagues. I think it's been terrific. And uh, I, I, again, thank you so much, Craig. And no problem. Uh, I thank the uh, the BCAR staff, as always, for their help in, in getting this getting this on the air. And uh, if anyone has ideas for uh, future events that we can we can do for you, just get in touch. You can email me. It's p c r o k e at bucksrealtour.com. And uh, we look forward to seeing air quotes seeing everyone soon. <laughs> Hopefully, really seeing you at some point in the next. I don't know, a couple months, who knows? But in the meantime, everyone, please stay safe 
and stay in touch. Thanks so much. Thanks, Craig. Thank Thanks, you. Appreciate Craig. it, guys. Great work with you. Thanks. Bye-bye now. Day, everyone.